Yeah, hi. Um, just a quick video of me transferring my beer from the fermentation barrel into the rotor keg here via a siphon hose. Everything's all been cleaned and sterilized. So I'm transferring it after four days, um, and the main reason for that is I want the rotor keg to um, carbonate naturally, and it seems a waste um, that, that you're losing all that CO2 um, in the primary fermentation. So I spoke to somebody at the home brew shop, and they suggested it say after four days maybe four or five days do that transfer and you still got all that yeast activity creating that co2 and um, that's going to carry on the rotor keg and you know really help to carbonate that beer up um, the bulk of the sediment is going to get left behind um, you can see there's a bit of a, uh, quite a bit of trub on the bottom there i don't know if you can pick it up in the video um, so yeah, that's 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 the plan. So that's transferring now. It's about halfway through at this stage. Um, the beer is uh, it's a it's a clone of a Cooper's Celebration Ale. Um, they just celebrated their hundred and fiftieth birthday. Created a special beer to mark that occasion. So um, this is a clone of that. Um, I'll put the recipe below, but it's basically um, a pale ale. A recipe with um, Centennial and uh, Nelson Salvine hops, uh, 25 grams of each. That was uh, dry hopped at the beginning of the fermentation. So that's in a muslin bag inside the barrel and that'll be left behind. Um, but hopefully all the, uh, the oils that have come out of the hops and all the flavour and aroma is uh, being transferred. So yeah, we'll just let that finish. And um, yeah, I'll just f show you the final step. Okay, the beer is um, still happily transferring into the rotor keg. But while it's doing that, I just thought I might um, just show you something here. This is the um, the pressure cap that goes on the top of the rotor keg. So it's got an inlet valve here for CO2. Um, I'm going to carbonate the rotor keg naturally, but at some stage I will need to... Um, replace the head space as the beer level goes down with um, with CO2 so that's we inject it and also it's got a, a relief valve but um, one thing that's quite important is um, when you screw the cap on just to make sure that it's got a nice seal um, I'm going to put some uh, petroleum jelly just around the the ring there just to make sure it's nice and uh, air and watertight so we'll do that so just get a get a good dollop of it there just um, work it around the thread also around the rubber ring um, it's, it's food safe so you don't have to worry about um, getting poisoned by it or anything okay so that's done I've also done the same with the uh, the washer and the thread on the tap on the rotor keg itself so yeah just, just something to remember when you're putting the lid on Okay, uh, the transfer is um, completed from the uh, fermentation barrel into the rotor keg. Uh, I left behind probably about a little litre and a half, two litres, because I don't want to stir up too much of the sediment and transfer them to the rotor keg. So that's done. Now because I want to naturally um, prime my rotor keg, there's, there's still a lot of yeast activity there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, 130 grams of dextrose, which has been dissolved in boiling water, and this has been allowed to cool. So this will uh, kickstart the, the yeast a bit more and create a lot more CO2 in the rotor keg. So let's plonk that in. So I'll just tip that in. Yeah, we'll give it a give it a nice stir. The spoon's all been sterilised. Let's uh, go give the old yeast something to get excited about. Okay, so that's it done. So basically now the last step is to put the lid on. So we'll chuck it on now. So I'll try and do that up as tight as I can. Okay, so 
so that's done the tap is off which is very important don't want the co2 to escape the lid is done up as tight as possible now one more thing i'm going to do and it's probably optional but i like to do it is i'm going to inject some co2 into the headspace here and that will purge the oxygen out because um, as you know oxygen spoils your beer so you want to get rid of that so just press this down this is a soda stream bottle with an, a, an adapter to fit onto this valve so we'll push that down I want to push it down until I start hearing gas escape from the release valve here then I know that it's um, that it's uh, got enough CO2 in it Okay, you can only do it in sort of one or two second bursts otherwise the uh, tip of this will freeze Okay, hearing nothing coming out of the relief valve yet so let's give another whirl No, still nothing Okay, let's give another whirl Okay, must be getting pretty close, I would say. No, okay. I guess there's quite a bit of oxygen to get rid of there. So let's try again. the old relief valve that's letting the excess pressure out and that will stop perfect didn't think it would take quite that much uh, co2 but no, that's all done so uh, yep it's all ready to go so transfer is complete stirred in the 130 grams of dextrose expelled the oxygen out of the top so all I have to do now is just let the beer carbonate naturally. Um, so I'm going to let that probably, it's probably going to take a couple of weeks or so. Um, and then I'll, I'll test it and then once I'm happy with it I'll transfer the, uh, the whole rotor keg into the fridge. Yeah, so that, that's it. Uh, if you've got any questions um, about the beer itself or any questions about the rotor keg or um, how, how I transferred it or... If, uh, if I missed anything out, just give us a yell and I'll um, answer them in the comments comment section below. Okay, that's great. Cheers. Thanks for watching.